Okay, Trigo, Trig kiddos, this is section 7.4, part B. Um, that was a sloppy S, but you get the idea. Section 7.4, part B. So we're starting on problem 9. Now again, we are solving the equation. Here's what mine looks like. 3 sine squared theta minus 7 sine theta plus 2 equals 0. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to be solving this by factoring. So imagine, if you will, that sine theta was just x. So how would I factor something like 3x squared minus 7x plus 2 equals 0? If I were factoring that, okay, I don't know if you all remember how to do this. This would be a 3x and an x. Um, you could do it by grouping. Um, this year I've been teaching my kiddos a new method, slip and divide. There are several different ways to do it, but um, this would be a like a negative 2, negative 1. So then my outers would give me a negative 6x. My inner negative 1x would add to negative 7x. That's how I would solve it. Then I would go through here, and I would have two equations that come out of here. I'd have 3x minus 1 equals 0, which leaves me with 1 third. And out of here, I'd have x minus 2 equals 0, which leaves me with 2. We're going to do the same thing over here, only with signs. So this is actually going to factor as 3 sine theta minus 1 times sine theta minus 2, all equals 0. Okay, so in lieu of the x, we're using sine theta. So then when we go to solve each of these equations, remember your um, zero multiplication principle, if m times n equals 0, either m equals 0 and or n equals 0. One of them has to. So we'd have 3 sine theta equals 1, which would give me sine theta equals 1 third. And over here, if I solve, I would have sine theta equals 2. Now, the sine theta equals 2, never going to happen. If you all remember, the range for your sine and cosine function is between, the range is between negative 1 and 1. So nothing, if you try to put that, if you try to find the arc sine of 2, you're going to get a big fat error on your calculator. So that doesn't work. So all we can do then is solve sine theta equals 1 third. So that means theta is the arc sine of one third. Okay, well, if you poke in the arc sine of one third, again, sine is positive now in the first and second quadrants. So we have to remember that. Sine is positive in quadrant one and quadrant two. Remember, sine is your y axis. So this tells us then that we're going to have two different answers. Okay, my quadrant one answer, um, if I poke that in a calculator, now keep in mind you need to be um, in radians here, okay, but if you poke in the arc sine of one third, you get 0.34 on your calculator. So, 0.34, and again, remember that this is plus 2 pi k. That's one of your answers, okay? Now, again, if you imagine your unit circle, if this is 0.34, then how do I get this same relative angle? This is going to be pi minus 0.34. Well, what's pi minus 0.34? Again, this is quadrant 2. You're going to have pi minus 
0.34, which is going to give you, and this says, by the way, in the directions, round to three decimal places. So the 0.34, it was 0 0.340 something. Um, anyway, so I dropped the zero. But if I do this one, I get 2.802. And again, that would be plus 2 pi k. So those are my two answers. Okay. So if you just poke it in the calculator, the arc sine of 1 third, you get 0 0.340 something, something, something. Um, and then leave that in your calculator. Okay. And then I did pi minus the answer, and I got the 2.802. .02. And again, they're cyclical, so it's plus 2 pi k. Okay, next one. Um, my next problem is sine theta equals 1 half. Again, I feel like we've done this one before. Um, so sine is positive again in quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. So if I find theta is the arc sine of 1 half, okay, and again we can find this on our unit circle, okay, but again we're going to get two answers, quadrant 1 and quadrant 2 here. So quadrant 1 answer is pi over 6. And again, cyclical is plus 2 pi k. That's one of my answers. Quadrant 2 is 5 pi over 6. Again, that's cyclical plus 2 pi k. Those are my two answers. Okay, first quadrant, second quadrant. Moving right along. Number 11, again, solve the given equation. This is the same type of deal, only it's negative. So, sine is negative in quadrant 3 and quadrant 4. So, this tells me theta, again, is the arc sine of negative one half. So again, I'm going to get two answers. And I'm going to get a quadrant three answer and I'm going to get a quadrant four answer. So um, your quadrant three answer is seven pi over six. So again, that's cyclical plus two pi k. And quadrant 4 answer then is 11 pi over 6 plus 2 pi k. Okay. All right. Those would be your two answers. And again, put them in the same box. Just put a comma between them. And you should be fine. Moving right along. Next one. This one's pretty straightforward. Cosine theta equals negative 1. Now, if you remember, cosine is your x-axis. So, this is cosine, this is sine. On our unit circle, where is it negative 1? Negative 1 right here. Well, that is pi, okay? It's only going to happen once. It's not going to happen two times, okay? Because it's on one of the axes. It's not in a particular quadrant. It's only going to happen once on the entire unit circle. So, again, theta is the arc cosine of negative 1, and that is just pi. But, again, you have to account for every iteration each time you go around the circle. So it is pi plus 2 pi k. That would be your answer. Okay. All right. That one's pretty straightforward. Next one. Number 13. Again, solve the given equation. 
um, we have cosine theta equals 0 0.12. Now again, going to have to use our calculator on this one. Okay, and again, let's remind ourselves that cosine is positive in quadrant one and quadrant four because it's the x-axis. So if we try to find theta, theta is the arc cosine of 0.12. You poke that in a calculator and you get 1.45. Okay, now, 1.45 occurs in the first quadrant. Here's the 1.45, okay? But again, cosine's also positive in the fourth quadrant. So this would be a negative 1.45, which is 2 pi minus 1.45. Well, if you literally poke that in a calculator, 2 pi minus 1.45, you get 4.83. So those are my two choices. So I get this plus 2 pi k. That's one of my choices. That's my quadrant one. And then you also get 4.83 plus 2 pi k. That's my answer in quadrant four, okay? Now, this is also one where they want six specific solutions. So you just have to poke these in a calculator. Um, so you're gonna go whoops, six specific solutions. So we have got 1.45, 1.45 plus 2 pi, 1.45 plus 4 pi. Okay, then I'm going to, that's 3 from the top one. Now I'm going to do 3 from the bottom one. I've got 4.83, then I've got 4.83 plus 2 pi, and I've got 4.83 plus 4 pi. Well, literally, if I poke those in a calculator, um, I am going to get 1.45, 7.73, and 14.02. Then I've got 4.83. I've got 11.12. And I've got 17.4. Those would be my six specific solutions. And I would not round. I would literally use the pi button on my calculator. Okay, that would be the most accurate. You wouldn't have any rounding errors there. But Okay, next one. So we have... Tangent squared theta minus 9, in parentheses, times 2 cosine theta plus 1 equals 0. Okay, now, again, this is the zero product principle. Um, so if two things multiply together to equal 0, either one equals 0, the other does, or they both do. So I've got two equations here. I've got tangent squared theta equals 9 and or I've got 2 cosine theta equals negative 1 or cosine theta equals negative 1 half. Okay, so I've got a couple of things going on here. Um, first of all, let's solve the tangent. That's a tangent squared. So once again, how do I take care of that? Okay, I take care of that by square rooting. 
but if I square root, if I use the square root procedure, I've got to remember that plus or minus, right? So this turns into tangent theta equals plus or minus 3. Now, this is going to give me essentially an answer in all four quadrants. Okay? Um, and what I'm going to do then is you can do this two different ways. You can find the answer in all four quadrants and add a 2 pi k, or to me, I would find the answer in the first two quadrants um, and add just pi k. So let's, um, let's use our calculator and see what we got here on tangent first. That's the trickier one, if you will. So theta equals inverse tan of 3. If I do a positive 3, okay, I get 1.249. Okay, now, um, if I do inverse tan of negative 3, I get 5.034. Now, I, I'm struggling here because I would, this is in the fourth quadrant. You can tell by the, this is in the fourth quadrant. This is obviously in the first quadrant, okay? Now, we might need to find it in each quadrant and just add a 2 pi k. I don't quite know how the book would take it. My answer shows all four with a 2 pi k, which I find kind of strange because we ought to just be able to find the first and second quadrant and just add 1 pi k. Um, so, but I'll do it the way the book has it here. So if that's quadrant one, how would I find quadrant two? Well, quadrant two would be pi minus 1.249, okay? Pi minus 1.249 would be 1 1.893. Everybody with me there? And then if that's quadrant four, quadrant three would be pi plus 1.249, which would give me 4.391, okay? So we have a quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and a quadrant four. And then I would just be adding, since we found it in all four quadrants, then I would add a two pi k to all of them. Now, it ought to be able to take just the quadrant one and two answers and add a one pi k to each of them. I'm, I'm honestly, I probably should have checked it before I went to solve it, um, but those would be four of your answers, okay? Now, let's find the ones that work for the second problem. So this one, let's solve it. So our theta would equal the arc cosine of negative one half. Well, if you remember, cosine is negative in quadrant two and quadrant three. Okay, cosine's negative in two and three. So if you poke that in a calculator or whatever, you're going to see that in quadrant two, that answer is going to be 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi k. And
And in quadrant three, that answer is going to be four pi over three plus two pi k. So to cover your hiney, you're going to have six answers on here. Okay? And again, the tangent, you ought to be able to just list the first and the second quadrant and put a 1 pi k. Um, but for whatever reason, my answer key has all four quadrants. So whatever. Okay, that was kind of long. Let's move on. Number 15. I've got... Whoops. Sorry, I want to go back to black. I apologize here. I've got sine theta times cosine theta minus 7 sine theta equals 0. Now, um, again, we're solving given the equation. Uh, let k be any integer around the three decimal places. This one, the first thing that jumps out at me is we just have two terms. Okay? This is a term, and this is a term. So the one thing that jumps out at me is both terms have a sine in them. So I'm going to factor out a sine theta. So if I factor out sine theta, I'm left with cosine theta minus 7. Now again, this is the zero product principle. So I've actually got two equations coming out of here. I've got sine theta equals 0, and I've got cosine theta minus 7 equals 0. Well, this part is going to give me cosine theta equals 7, and that's a big fat eh, because remember, the range of your sine and cosine is from negative 1 to positive 1. If you try to poke in the arc cosine of 7, you're going to get a big fat error. So that one is just crossed out. It's not applicable. No solution on that part. But on the sine part, again, remember that sine is your y-axis. So sine is going to be 0 here, and it's going to be 0 here. Okay? So you've got 0, and you've got pi. So our answer is just going to be pi k. That's it. Because if I put in a 0 for k, then my first answer is 0. Put in a 1 for k, I get pi. Put in a 2 for k, I get 2 pi. Same thing as 0. Put in a 3 for k, I get 3k. Same thing as pi. So it just essentially is 0 plus pi k. Because it's going to cycle every 180 degrees instead of every 360. So that's my only answer. Okay, moving right along. Number 16. This is kind of a multi-step, and they go through the whole, the moon revolves around the earth, yada, yada, yada. What we really need to know out of all of this is the basic equation. F equals 1 half times 1 minus cosine theta. That's all we really need to know out of any of this. So part A... Okay, so part A here says that f equals 0. Well, all we have to do is set the equation they gave us equal to 0. So 1 half 1 minus cosine theta equals 0. Okay, well, if that equals 0, if I get rid of the 1 half by multiplying both sides by 2, then 2 times 0 is still 0. I still, I end up with just this. So then... Cosine theta equals 1. Well, again, picture on your unit circle, cosine, remember, is your x. So this is 1. So it's just 0 degrees. This one, if you notice, it said to put your answer, theta has to be between 0 and 360 degrees less than 360, but greater than or equal to zero. So my answer is just zero degrees on part A. That's it. So this is about the only one I think that's been in degrees. Part B, um, they say F is 0.25 
which is we know to be one fourth. So all I have to do now is set the original equation f equal to one fourth and salt. So I'm going to have one half one minus cosine theta equal to one fourth. Well again, if I multiply both sides by two to get rid of the one half, I'm going to have one minus cosine theta equals one half. Okay, so this is going to give me cosine theta equals one half. Well, where does cosine equal a half? Look on your unit circle chart. Okay, this gives you two options. It is 60 degrees or it is 300 degrees. You've got two choices here. Okay, part C says F equals 0 0.5, which we know is 1 half. So we take our equation, 1 half, 1 minus cosine theta equals 1 half. Okay, well again, if I multiply both sides by 2, I get 1 minus cosine theta equals 1. Okay, so I have cosine theta equals zero. So where on our unit circle does cosine theta equal zero? Again, if I draw my unit circle, that's a bad circle, it equals zero here and here. So that is 90 degrees and 270 degrees. Last one, F is 1. So if F equals 1, we have our same equation, 1 half, 1 minus cosine theta equals 1. Again, multiply both sides by 2. We get this. So if I subtract 2, move it to the left, add cosine theta, move it to the right, and then I'm just going to flip-flop them but I end up with cosine theta equals negative 1. Well, again, where on our unit circle does cosine equal negative 1? Over here. So that is 180 degrees. Okay. So that's number 16, not too bad. Number 17, again, now we're back to radians, okay? The word problem 16 was the only one in degrees. So now mine says, whoops, one more time. I want to go back to black ink. So I have two cosine theta equals one. So this just means that cosine theta equals one half, and again, now, this one, you'll notice it says find all exact solutions in the interval theta between 0 and 2 pi. So we don't have, if it says all solutions, that's where we have to use the 2 pi k thing and, you know, give a generic answer to find every one of them that ever existed. This just wants them in one iteration of the unit circle, so between 0 and 2 pi. So cosine, again, is positive in the third and, or sorry, positive in the first and fourth quadrant, okay? So quadrant one, quadrant four, so we get pi over three and five pi over three. Both of those are answers. And that's it, just put a comma between them, okay? Next one, almost done. Um, same kind of deal here. We've got 2 sine theta equals negative root 3. Well, obviously then sine theta equals negative root 3 over 2. Sine is negative in the third and fourth quadrant. Okay, negative in the third and fourth quadrant. 
so quadrant three, quadrant four, this is another one where they just, it says find all exact solutions and they put interval notation zero to two pi. So you don't have to do the cyclical two pi k thing. Just two answers here. If you look that on your um, unit circle chart, that gives you four pi over three and five pi over three. Those are your two answers. Okay. Now, 19 and 20, we got to do a little uh, either factoring or substitution or something here. So um, let's look at 19. We have two cosine squared t minus cosine t equals 1. Now, there is no substitution I can do for that cosine squared. I mean, well, there is. I could put in 1 minus sine squared, but then I'm going to have a trig equation with two different trig functions in it, and that gets uglier. So I'm going to factor it the way it is. So I'm going to first pull over the 1, and I'm going to factor it. It's like reverse foiling. Okay, well, one of these is going to be a 2 cosine, the other one's just going to be a cosine, and then factors of negative 1, and then I've got to account for that 2 in the front. So this is going to be a negative 1 and a positive 1. So my outer would give me negative 2 cosine t, my inner would give me positive 1 cosine t, which would give me negative 1 cosine t here in the middle. Okay, so I know I factored correctly. So again, zero product principle. I'm going to have 2 cosine t plus 1 equals 0, and I'm going to have cosine t minus 1 equals 0. So this is going to give me 2 cosine t equals negative 1, or cosine t equals negative 1 half. This is going to give me cosine t equals 1. Now, Cosine t equals negative one half. Cosine is negative in the second and third quadrant. Quadrant two, quadrant three. And again, they want all of your answers between zero and two pi, so I don't have to worry about any cyclical stuff. So my two answers from here then are 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. Now, on the other one, this one, again, if you think about your unit circle, remember this is your cosine axis, so where is it equal to a positive 1? That's just at 0. So those are your three answers, a 0, 2 pi th over 3, and 4 pi over 3, okay? And I think they can be in any order. Last problem, we have sine squared x minus cosine squared x, whoops, plus sine x equals zero. Okay, now the first thing that bothers me about this one is that I've got two sines and I've got one cosine. Well, let's use a trig identity to substitute in for the cosine squared to get back to everything being in sine squared. So if you remember trig identity, you've got cosine squared x plus sine squared x equals 1. So that means cosine squared x equals 1 minus sine squared x. So that's what I'm going to substitute in. Okay? So I've got sine squared x minus 1 minus sine squared x 
plus sine x equals zero. Now, that negative out in front has to be distributed to both terms. Okay? So, this is going to give you sine squared x minus 1 plus sine squared x plus sine x equals 0. Now, combine like terms and rearrange this a little bit. We get 2 sine squared x plus sine x minus 1 equals 0. Same type of deal that we just did in the last one. We're going to solve it by factoring. Okay? So we're going to have a 2 sine x and a sine x to start each of our binomials. And then this is going to be the plus 1 and this is going to be the minus 1 so that the middle term adds up to positive 1. So I get from this one, I get sine x, I kind of jumped ahead here, equals 1 half. And this one gives me sine x equals negative 1. Now, sine x equals 1 half. Again, the directions here just want the answers between 0 and 2 pi. So, sine is positive in the first and second quadrant. So, quadrant 1 and quadrant 2. So, quadrant 1 and quadrant 2, my two answers are going to be pi over 6, and this is 5 pi over 6. So, those are two of my answers. Okay, sine equals a negative 1. Okay, again, if you think about your unit circle, your sine, remember, is your y-axis. So it's going to be down here is where it's a negative 1. So that is 3 pi over 2. So you should have three answers. Okay, and they should take them in any order. Okay, this concludes section 7.4, part B.